Hello and welcome to D20 Woodworking. I'm your host, Jason. And today we are breaking down the Valkyrie Hero Pack. Now this is primarily going to be for solo play. I think there's a lot of talk out there that Valkyrie doesn't make any sense for solo. It's only a multiplayer hero. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about that because I don't think I necessarily agree with it. So we're going to do a review of the hero, but through the lens of playing her primarily as a solo hero. Now, before I do, I want to let you know that I stream over on twitch.tv backslash d20 woodworking. Uh, I'm there every Sunday, Tuesday, and every other Thursday. And then sometimes during the week, I stream kind of after work. Make sure to come over, hang out. Uh, it's a good time. We have a lot of fun. The link to follow me and make sure you turn on notifications is down below. It's one of the first things in the description of this video. So make sure to check that out. So now as we jump into this, one of the first things I wanna really mention is that all of this is just my opinion, right? This is how I play Valkyrie. It doesn't mean it's the right way. It doesn't mean that there's a wrong way. It's just how I've been playing her and how I've enjoyed playing her. But what I want to do is just let you know that this basically my opinion, right? Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree or disagree. If there's other things I haven't really thought about with her, um, let me know down in the comments uh, what they are. So let's first start with Valkyrie's uh, alter ego side, which is Broomhilda. Four recovery, six hand size, 12 hit points. The setup has death glow upgraded side out of play. We'll get into that in a minute. And then you detach death glow instead of the side out of play whenever you flip to her, which is doesn't sound great right now, but it can be important as we get into that later on. Now on her hero side, she drops down to a five hand side, still 12 hit points. One thwart, two attack, one defense, and your hero action is to play the set aside death glow upgrade as if it were in your hand. So there's one card aside at all times, uh, unless it's attached to, to a, a minion or a villain. So what is that card? Let's, let's discuss that just a little bit. It's a one upgrade death glow. It's a condition attached to the enemy. Uh, when attached enemy is defeated, set this card aside out of play. And if Valkyrie defeated this enemy, ready her. So this already has you set up in the mindset that if you took out someone easy like a minion, you can detach this, ready up Valkyrie, reattach it for one cost, which kind of stinks. And I think that's important for a reason. Reattach it to a different enemy, attack it, knock it out, rinse and repeat, right? So I think this led a lot of people to believe that she was mainly meant for just taking out a bunch of minions and that was it um, because of a card like this, right? This card kind of leads you in that direction. We'll get more into why I don't think that's necessarily the case in a minute, but let's go through her first, her, her ally specific hero card, uh, Annabelle Riggs. Now, if you watched my video, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Annabelle. Um, I don't think she's that great. Now, a couple people have pointed out that she's basically just a cheap blocker. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. You can use her as that. She's a two cost, one thwart, one attack, two life, and her alter ego action, exhaust Annabelle Riggs, search the top five cards of your deck for a Valk card and add it to your hand, shuffle the rest of the deck back. The alter ego action isn't terrible. If you get her out the very first turn, it's not awful, but I don't think it's great. You can use her as a cheap block. Um, that's basically what I think she's best for. Um, you get one thwart, one attack. Maybe you ping off a uh, tough status or something like that. Past that, I don't know much else you would really do with, with Annabelle. So let's get into our supports and our upgrades. And this will kind of lead into the whole Death Glow talk and, and the best way to use that card. So first we have Valhalla, uh, two cost support. After Valk attacks and defeats an enemy that has Death Glow attached, exhaust Valhalla, draw one card, heal one damage. Now this is great, right? This again, I think it kind of led people to think that, okay, there's a minion out there I can get constant card draw by taking out a minion then working on something else and i think what this kind of sets up for is that you want one minion out there right because you're exhausting this card so you put out one minion knock it out you can heal up when you need to which is always great and then now you can draw one card as well i think this is a great card that helps you heal i think the other card that really helps you a lot too is godlike stanima and it's an absolutely fantastic card that lets you heal lets you get rid of a status ailment i think that's really important it's really good um uh, the combination of those two cards being able to heal without necessarily having to flip over, I think is important. There are times you do want to flip over, but between those two cards, I think that can really help you out a lot. Let's get into Valk's Spear, uh, restricted upgrade, one cost. Valk gets plus one defense, so she normally has one. Now she would be up to two. And plus two defense instead when defending against an uh, enemy that has death go attached. So you could be defending against three against any death go enemy. 
I don't think this is necessarily geared for minions as much as it is for villains, right? You put it on a villain, you're defending three against that villain, which is huge. This card becomes more important later on, makes it a little bit better later on, and we'll get into that in a second. In general, being able to defend is really nice. I don't know if Valkyrie is the type of hero I want to defend with constantly because her other attachment or other upgrade is Dragon Fang. So she gets plus one attack, so then from a two attack to three attack. And if the enemy has death glow, it's now a plus two attack. So she's swinging for four against any death glow enemies. There are a lot of villains that have 12, 16 life. That means three, four rounds of just normal attacking is going to knock out that villain. Now that's a little bit, you know, a decent amount of time, but it's not bad for a hero, right? You're definitely doing a large amount of damage at that point. So I really like this combination. I, I tend to put out Dragon Fang a lot more. I think the spear, again, has a point. And we'll get into that in a minute once we get to some of her event cards. But overall, Dragon Fang is fantastic, especially for if you do have a minion out there, knocking out the minion, readying up your hero, attach Dragon Fang to the villain, start pounding away. So one of her upgrades, two cost upgrades, is uh, Aragorn. Gives her four hit points and the aerial trait. Now, I haven't messed around too much with the aerial trait on Valkyrie. I don't know how good it is or how bad it is or anything like that. But plus four hit points on her is fantastic. She already has 12. So now up to 16 and if you have the ability to heal with Galax Danima or um, Valhalla it's really great again defending doesn't seem as important with her when you have stuff like that so that is Aragorn next we have Flight of the Valkyrie which is a weird card that I was kind of playing and I don't think I like it as much for solo I think for multiplayer it makes a lot more sense two cost upgrade after an enemy with death glow is defeated, discard this card, uh, Flight of the Valkyrie, and remove five threat from a scheme. Now, again, if you're if you're knocking off minions, five threat from a scheme is huge. Um, it's nice that's an upgrade, not an event, so you can just play it out there and you can remove it when need be. It's not a force response, so you can wait until the threat gets a little bit higher. If you can play it early, it's not terrible. It's not a bad idea to have this card. Um, and I think it, it has its place in the solo deck, but I don't think it's as important um for solo play because it's just again unless you're defeating a bunch of minions which i don't think you should be for solo play i think it should only be about one minion and then a villain um this card doesn't have a, as much isn't as useful now we get into our events we'll start with our zero cost event uh visit valhalla it's an alter ego action return a valkyrie card from your discard pile to your hand this is important if you um if you have your attack events that we're going to talk about in one second or card draw events it's good for getting those things out there other than that I don't use it that much, I'll be honest. Next up, we're going to talk about Chooser of the Slain. So again, this is a card that gets you a minion, puts in play, engage with you, you draw two cards, zero cost. I think this, when I saw cards like this, this led me to believe again that I should be looking for a minion out there, right? Not a bunch of minions. I think it's good to get a minion, attach Death Glow, attack that minion. If you could do overkill on it, which we'll talk about in one second, to have overkill hit onto the villain, that's huge. If you use Valhalla on top of it, you get a card draw, which basically replaces this card. Plus, you got a free uh, two card draw um, and lets you heal one, which is huge, too, because we're not really defending against attacks. I think Choose of the Slain is a solid card. Again, if there's no minions out there, no minions, I would play this card draw. If there's already a minion, I don't know if I would do that right away. Uh, and the minions I'm trying to get out there are minions with low amounts of health, right? I want it to easily be knocked out. Again, if you have flight of the valkyr and i know i'm mispronouncing that i apologize but if you have that now put you in a position to play that when you get the minion out there that you want that's really cheap and easy you could do this lower five threat it kind of is a little bit of a combo build on there but can be a really powerful option the next event i want to talk about is shield maiden which i think is a huge important card that doesn't get played as much as it should so one cost event uh when the enemy with death glow um attach attacks declare valkyrie as a defender without exhausting her she gets plus two defense with the spear you are now at three defense right so if you have the spear and death glow is attached to, let's say the villain you're defending three if you play shield maiden you now uh defend for five without exhausting five against most villains is pretty good you're maybe taking one or two damage right you're not you're not getting hit really hard and when i see cards like this it really leads me to believe that okay attaching death go to the villain isn't a bad idea because you should be just taking out the minions right you shouldn't be like having minions be attacking you each round you should be if you if you're getting them out there you should be taking them out and then moving on to the villain so when i see shield maiden it kind of puts me in the mindset of okay this is a good card for when death glow is attached to the villain and I don't have to worry about an attack for a round. I'm all set up, good to go. 
it, it prolonged my life, especially when there's times when the villain attacks twice in a row, don't have to worry as much about it. Now our big attack card is Have At Thee. It's a three cost event. Deal seven damage to an enemy. If the enemy has Death Glow attached, this attack gains overkill. I think this is a great card for the minions that are out there, right? It's a cheap minion, let's say a two, two health minion. We're now doing five damage to the uh, villain from this card. We can attach Death Glow. And now we're swinging for four. We're doing nine damage in a round on a, on a very easy, you know, two minion out there. We already drew a card, possibly drew two more with uh, Chooser of the Slain. Um, possibly drew two with that. We healed one possibly with Valhalla, right? There's a lot of different combinations you can play, but the key is to only have one minion out there, then attack the villain. Um, I don't think you want a lot of minions out there now in a multiplayer game there's a bunch you can just death glow attack down the line and I think that's what a lot of people did right off the bat is they saw how death glow worked with redding valkyrie if she knocked out that 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 enemy and you can't really do that in the villain except for twice in the game and the second time you win right i think a lot of people were seeing that as okay death glow works best for just knocking off minions not so much with the villain i don't think that's necessarily the case i think if you're playing solo you should be focusing on Yes, taking out the one villain if they are there. If they are not, putting on Death Glow. If you need to detach Death Glow, you have to flip down. And we'll get into that in a second. But you have to flip down. Um, that allows you to detach Death Glow, bring cards back up, let you visit Valhalla, which lets you get those cards from the discard pile back into your hand. Hopefully, I have at thee, right? To play again, to knock out that minion quickly and go right back to attacking the villain. You want to quickly mow down any minions that are in the way to get back to that villain, get death go back on that villain and attack the four damage consistently over and over and over on that on that uh on that villain i believe that's the best way to play in doing so i think for solo play this is a justice hero um i think under surveillance is a super important card for this hero um to add four threat to whatever scheme i think is huge i think the ability to play some events to either get card draw or to remove schemes from or remove threat from different schemes is huge. I think there's a lot a lot of different cards that you can play as far as events, some upgrade cards, right? Beat Cop kind of makes sense if you if you can work it out right. Different cards to play your different events are important for justice, right? So I, I, I think that's kind of how I look at this, right? Under surveillance is key. You really need it there, especially when you need to flip over. You're getting easy thwarting with events and different allies from justice. I think that's important. And I think that's how I would play it, right? I'm not looking at my allies to do much damage, if any. I'm looking at them to thwart, keep everything kind of in check. Because I don't have a ton of options with Valkyrie to thwart off of any of the schemes. She has one thwart and then you have basically a flight of the Valkyrie to remove five. But you have to defeat a minion or a, a villain to do so. So I think it gets a little tough. So now let's talk a bit about the biggest issues with Valkyrie and why a lot of people say she's she's really tough to play and that's because of her obligation and her nemesis. Her obligation, trouble in other world, you would give to the Brunhilde player. Valkyrie cannot attack the enemy with death bow attached, which is terrible. Um, alter ego action, spend a science and energy resource, remove this card from the game. Not being able to attack the enemy with death bow is huge. Um, really stinks, really just kind of throws you off. You have to flip. Again, this is why I think justice is so important. So you can keep that threat down, flip over, get rid of these, uh, get rid of this card. Unfortunately, you need to spend two resources, which is really tough to do sometimes. It's it's honestly a really tough card. It's a really tough, tough card to deal with. <laughs> but to be honest, the worst thing is Shadows of the Past. That can happen to her. A lot of people say Shadows of the Path is pretty much an on that game over, uh, especially on solo, and it's hard to disagree with them. The Valkyrie's shadows is probably the worst one out there as of right now so let's jump into her um valkyrie nemesis minion it's enchantress two scheme one attack five life when revealed discard the encounter deck or i'm sorry search the encounter deck discard pile and set aside area for a copy of seduced and attach it to your identity okay let's look at what seduced does right surely that's probably not a great card it's not it attaches to your identity you cannot make basic attacks or play attack events in order to get rid of it Alter Ego Action, uh, spend a Science and, and Energy resource to discard this card. Okay, you're thinking, I just have to flip over, get rid of this card, we're back at it. That's not the worst part of this. The worst part is the side scheme, Powerful Enchantments. 
it comes in with two uh, threat, hinder of one per hero. So three if you're playing solo. Acceleration icon, which is already terrible, but players cannot discard attachments that are attached to friendly characters. So you need to remove three threat from this scheme before you can even get rid of Seduced. And you have to get rid of Seduced to get rid of Enchantress. It kind of snowballs on top of itself there. And this is why I think you have to play um, a Justice deck as Valkyrie. I don't think there's another way to really do it because she only has the ability to thwart for one normally. Uh, the only other way to do it is by playing Flight the Valkyor. And the only way you can remove the five threat from a scheme is defeating an enemy that has Death Glow attached but i can't do that because i can't make basic attacks or play attack events so if you are to defeat this i think honestly the only way you can really do it is is by being a justice deck but if you're not a justice deck this is pretty much game over it's three rounds to basically get powerful enchantments off unless you have some good allies out there that hopefully help you uh, but you're a sitting duck, right? There's nothing really much you could do. You have to flip over get or get rid of this card, flip over, then spend more cards to get rid of Seduced. Then you can get rid of, rid of Enchantress. Um, so it's a very, very tough nemesis to get rid of. Once you get it, it it's, it's really hard to come back from, just flat out. And the last card out there is Beguiled. Um, you attach to an ally with the highest cost without Beguiled attached. It engages you. Uh, if there is no allies out there, it gains Surge. Um, it's not a great card, right? Again, one of those allies would be the ones that would hopefully be helping you remove a uh, threat from this side scheme, Powerful Enchantments. So that can really hurt too. Now, it's not guaranteed to come out right then, but if you have a small deck, it's probably going to come out pretty soon. So honestly, Valkyrie's Nemesis is probably the worst one out there. It's really, really tough to deal with. And it's, I think, a part of the reason why a lot of people stay away from her is because if you get Shadows, it's it's kind of game over at that point. Even with a good Justice deck, it's it's going to be really, really tough to, to get through that. So those are my thoughts and my opinions on Valkyrie. Um, hopefully some of this was beneficial to you. Um, if not, let me know your thoughts. Like I said, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Is there something I'm missing? Is there um, another way you like to play or that you think works really well? Maybe there's a protection slash leadership build I haven't really thought of that works really well for solo. I'm kind of interested in hearing that. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Um, you know, lets me continue making videos like this. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this content. So thank you very much. Take care.